So my eldest son, his wife, and their three kids are moving in with us. Can you believe it? I had just bought our dream house with a yard in Hawaii, thinking we could finally live the good life. But then my husband dropped this bomb on me. I was stunned by his words. As long as my husband and our eldest son's family are around, I won't be able to live my own life to the fullest. Memories of the terrible treatment I've endured from them flooded my mind. And finally, I made up my mind to fight back. From that moment on, I secretly prepared for retaliation, waiting for the day of the long-awaited move. When I checked my phone, I saw dozens of missed calls from my husband at our Hawaii house. Hey, you finally answered. Where are you now? How many times do you think I've called? Everyone's mad and waiting. I could hear the urgency in my husband's voice, but I remained calm. Oh, I thought you all were having a blast without me. You can have that house. I'm not coming back, so you all better work it out together from now on. I said that, but my husband wasn't backing down easily. He's insisting I come back. And we can't even use electricity or water. What the heck is going on? You're just realizing that now. Jeez, don't mess around. Come back right now. I couldn't stop laughing hearing my husband's furious voice. It's a shame to let go of the house in Hawaii we just bought. But if I think about exchanging it for a comfortable life, well, I guess it's okay. Those people, you can't do anything without me, must be in a panic by now. Just imagining it makes me chuckle. Considering how much my eldest son's family and my husband have put me through, this level of retaliation should be acceptable. I'm Emily Johnson. I'm turning 60 this year. I may not have any special talents, but I've lived my life diligently. To earn some extra cash, I work part-time at the pharmacy three days a week. My husband, Andrew, and I are living together since he retired last year. He's like a stereotypical husband always meddling in everything but incapable of doing anything on his own. We have two sons. The eldest son is Logan, and the younger one, Matthew. Logan has always been good at sports since he was a kid. My husband doted on him because of his athleticism, spoiling him rotten. As a result, Logan grew up to be quite arrogant. He couldn't study at all, but he got into high school on a baseball scholarship and graduated. After that, he started working at a local car factory. At the age of 22, he got his girlfriend pregnant, and they had a shotgun wedding. His wife, Amy, seems to regret getting pregnant and married against her will. She still complains a lot about it. But strangely, she had two more kids right after that. She seems uninterested in working and stays at home as a full-time housewife, and she's not good at cooking, so she often comes over to our place for meals. They live in an apartment in our neighborhood as a family of five. And our second son, Matthew, was the opposite of Logan. He was not good at sports, but he loved studying. He was always top of his class in elementary school, a thoughtful and kind kid. However, it seemed like my husband didn't like a quiet Matthew, as he didn't contribute to Matthew's education expenses. So, I had to dip into my savings to cover his education costs. But Matthew, being considerate of me, opted for scholarships when going to college and graduate school. 
I'm proud of Matthew for that, but my husband couldn't care less. After graduating from graduate school, Matthew got a job at a major company and married his girlfriend from college a few years later. His wife, Lily, is smart and hardworking. Even after having a child, she still works full time. Just when I thought the burden of raising our two sons was lifted as they started their own families, I realized I'll have to take care of my retired husband for decades to come, which felt daunting. And then, one day, I got a call from my eldest son's wife, Amy. Hi, Emily. I want to go out with my friends tomorrow, so could you keep my children? Here we go again, I thought. Amy always calls out of the blue asking me to babysit. Lately, just hearing Amy's sickly sweet voice gives me the creeps. Sorry, but I've got work tomorrow. If you'd told me earlier, I could have taken the day off. But Emily, ain't your job just a part-time? And you can even take care of your adorable grandkids for a bit? Come on, take the day off. I can't just do that. I can't bother my co-workers. Well, I can't bother my friends either. So, I'll drop the kids off at your place at 9 am tomorrow, okay? With that, she hung up. I let out a heavy sigh. There's no stopping Amy now. She'll definitely dump her three kids on me tomorrow. My kindergarten-aged eldest grandson, my preschooler granddaughter, and my newborn granddaughter from last year. Taking care of three grandchildren is tough. I consulted my husband about it. Hey, Amy wants me to watch the kids tomorrow. I've got work, so can you take care of them for me? What are you talking about? Taking care of kids is a woman's job. Skip work. My husband, despite doting on our grandchildren from Logan, can't handle them on his own. He leaves the diaper changes and meal prep to me while he watches TV with the grandkids, giving them snacks as they please. He just enjoys the fun parts. It's my job to scold the grandkids when they misbehave, so they dislike me and favor my husband, who spoils them. Amy and Logan are both indifferent to discipline and education, so the kids run wild. It honestly sucks to babysit grandchildren who can't follow basic manners. But if we let them grow up like this, it'll be irreversible. So I'm resigned to being the bad guy. With a heavy heart, I called in sick to work and apologized. One day, I got a call from Lily, my second son's wife. While Amy often calls, Lily usually emails unless it's urgent. I answered the phone, thinking it was unusual. Hello, Emily. Is it okay to call you now? Yeah, sure. What's up? Your 60th birthday is coming up next month, so I thought we'd celebrate your milestone. Can Matthew, Emma, and I come visit you on the weekend around your birthday? I never thought anyone remembered my birthday. Lily's proposal made me smile involuntarily. Well, do you remembered? That's so sweet of you. Of course, you're more than welcome to stay over. Thank you. I'm glad you said that. I'll let you know when it gets closer. Oh, and on the day itself, we'll take care of everything like meals so you can fully enjoy yourself. Please relax on the day. Normally, nobody pays any attention to me, so Lily's thoughtfulness was heartwarming. Matthew's family lives out of state so they often stay over when they come to visit. Having guests can be a hassle, but Lily always brings extravagant gifts and insists on doing things like cleaning the bedroom and bathroom. Even though I tell her she doesn't have to, it's no burden at all. 
My granddaughter Emma is also well behaved and polite. She's so cute and such a good kid that I always look forward to seeing her. Anticipating the visit from Matthew's family, I persevered through my daily work, enduring Amy's selfishness and my husband's unreasonableness. And then, on the promised Saturday evening, as I waited, slightly more dressed up than usual, the doorbell rang. Thinking it was a bit earlier than the agreed time, I peered at the intercom screen in high spirits, only to find Logan's family there. Surprised, I asked my husband, Why are Logan and the others here? Today is the day Matthew and his family are supposed to come. Oh, I heard that Matthew's family was coming to celebrate your 60th birthday. So I thought I'd invite Logan as well. More people for a celebration is better, right? Upon hearing those words, I was dumbfounded. Why did you invite them without asking? Lily has been planning and preparing so much. And if Logan and the others are here, everything will be chaotic. With that, my husband visibly became grumpy and retorted. What's the deal? I went to the trouble of inviting them for you, and this is how you repay me. Stop being so selfish. Hurry up and let Logan's family in. Amidst the argument with my husband, the door opened and Logan's family barged in. I had left the door unlocked, expecting Matthew's family to arrive. I wished I had kept it locked, but it was too late. Hey there. We heard there's some delicious food here, so we came over. Amy said, waltzing in empty-handed as usual. Logan plopped down on the couch and demanded a drink. The room, which I had meticulously cleaned, was instantly thrown into chaos by the children. I felt like crying. In my days, the doorbell rang again. This time, it must be Matthew's family. I weakly opened the door. There stood Matthew holding a large bouquet of flowers, Lily with bags from the department store, and Emma looking adorable in her outfit. Oh, thank you all for coming. Emily, what's wrong? You don't look so good. Lily began to say, but before she could finish, Amy came and without a word of greeting, snatched the paper bag Lily was holding and peered inside. Oh, it looks delicious. Wow, Matthew makes good money. We can afford fancy stuff like this at our place. Well, thanks. I'll gladly take it. With that, Amy hurried back into the house. Those of us left at the entrance were dumbfounded. So, Amy was here too. Yeah, my husband must have invited her. She showed up out of the blue earlier. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. Even though the food prepared for Emily was taken, there's still cake left, so I'll hide it in the fridge for later and we can enjoy it then. Thank you. As we entered the room, we saw Logan's family and my husband devouring the meal Lily had prepared. Hey, we're running out of food here. Make something so Logan and the kids can eat their fill. Sorry, it seems the kids were pretty hungry. And isn't this portion a bit small? There's no more for Emily and Matthew's family. Seeing Amy laughing, Matthew and his family made bitter faces and said, Well, that's right. We only prepared enough for mom and us. So, you're saying we're being excluded? That's so mean. Come on, Amy. Cut them some slack. It's mom's birthday today. Don't we have cake or something? Lily quickly hid the cake box she was holding behind her, but Logan noticed it promptly and marched over to snatch the box. There it is. Come on, bring it out. Hey kids, it's cake time. Eat as much as you want. 
All we could do was watch Logan's family do as they pleased. My husband and Logan helped themselves to alcohol from the fridge and started drinking. Lily and Matthew looked apologetic as they approached me. Emily, we should have bought more, we're sorry. No, I'm the one who should apologize. I can't believe this happened. No, it's not Mom's or Lily's fault at all. How about we go out to eat somewhere now? As we were talking, my husband shouted loudly at me. Hey, come over here. Everyone's gathered for you today. What's the point if the guest of honor isn't here? Emily, please stay there and relax. I'll use the kitchen. I'll make something quick. No, it's okay. I have to go back. So just you all go out and have something delicious to eat. I didn't want to serve Matthew and his family, who came all the way from out of town, something simple. Oh, we'll be fine. We came here today to celebrate you. That's right. We'll just grab whatever's in the fridge, so mom, don't worry about it. That won't do. Go out and enjoy yourselves. There's not much in the fridge anyway. I'm really sorry. Then, Emma said something to cheer me up. Grandma, how about this? We'll go buy some delicious bread, and tomorrow morning, let's eat it together. With that, Matthew's family went out for a while. Grateful to them, I returned to the living room, only to find it in a terrible state. My husband and Logan were busy drinking, while Amy lay sprawled out, minching on snacks she found in our house while looking at her phone. The kids were engrossed in video games, bouncing around on the sofa. On the table, there were just a few leftovers and the messed up cake. Why did this have to happen? I was truly saddened that my eagerly anticipated 60th birthday celebration had been ruined. However, tonight, Matthew's family was staying over. Tomorrow morning, I'd have a pleasant meal with Emma. As I tried to cheer myself up, Amy said something unbelievable. We'll be staying over tonight, so please take care of us. No way, Matthew's family is staying over tonight, so it's impossible. If Matthew's family is staying, then we can too, right? Despite living nearby, Amy's insistence on staying over was probably fueled by a competitive spirit towards Matthew's family. We don't have a room where a large number of people can stay. We're fine with the sofa, and the kids can just use Emily's bed. Oh, come on. What's with you, Emily? You've been treating us like intruders since earlier. Is this discrimination? Normally, I'd reluctantly accept Amy's selfishness, but this time, I didn't want to give in. I wanted to enjoy my time with Matthew's family. As I was about to retort against Amy, my husband finally spoke up loudly to me. Enough. Our adorable grandchildren are staying over. Isn't that great? It seems like Matthew's family has already left. So today we'll host Logan's family. Once it came to this, it was hopeless. My husband and Amy deemed up and wouldn't listen to me. Feeling bad about involving Matthew's family, I called Lily and explained the situation, and I asked them to return their home for today. Logan's family spent the night in our home, bustling around and then left after finishing breakfast. What was my 60th birthday celebration all about, anyway? Tears welled up as I looked at the bouquet left by Matthew's family. I decided to avoid Logan's family as much as possible from now on. I had been avoiding them more than ever since then. I tried not to answer Amy's calls but she would show up unannounced at our house regardless. 
Realizing that my body couldn't take it anymore, I decided to physically distance myself. So, I made a suggestion to my husband. Hey, honey, this house is getting old, and why don't we move to another property for a peaceful retirement? Oh, that sounds good. Let's do it. I've always wanted to retire to Hawaii. Things progressed smoothly from there. My husband found an old Hawaiian house. It's quite old, but it has a garden and is close to the sea. It might be a good property to live in after some renovations. One day, while we were gradually starting the preparations for the move, my husband said while looking at his phone. Guess what? Logan's family, along with their three kids, are moving in with us. What? I never agreed to that. What's going on? I just got an email from Logan. They're going to live together with us. Isn't that great? Surprised, I immediately called Logan. After listening to my urgent voice, Logan handed the phone to Amy. Hi, Emily. It's Amy. I'm out right now. What's up? What's up? Aren't you guys moving in? Contrary to my urgency, Amy replied in a relaxed tone. Oh, that thing. Well, since it's inconvenient for just Andrew and Emily to live alone, we've decided to live together. You should be grateful. I never asked for that. Well, I've always dreamed of moving to Hawaii. Logan is enthusiastic about it too, and he's saying he'll quit his job. Since we're going together, be nice to us. If you resist, we won't take care of you in old age. I was speechless. I thought Logan's family was determined to disrupt my comfortable life no matter what. Memories of their past behavior raced through my mind. It was then that I finally decided to fight back. Until the day we moved to Hawaii, I continued to live with my usual smile on my face. However, behind the scenes, I was arranging to rent a new apartment for living alone near Matthew's family. When I told them about the Hawaii incident, Lily made this proposal. I've been thinking about this for a while, but would you like to live with us, Emily? It was a kind offer, but I declined. I appreciate your offer, but I can't leave my husband behind. Oh, really? Haven't you considered divorce? I am considering divorce eventually, but I can't bother you at this point. I felt it would be unfair to involve Matthew's family in the divorce turmoil. We want to do something nice for you, Emily. Matthew told us that you've been sacrificing yourself and working hard behind your family since his childhood. I also have a lot of respect for you. Thank you for saying that. At least, won't you consider living near our house? I'll look for a good place for you. Lily's kindness touched my heart. Lily, thank you. Are you sure? Yes, Matthew and Emma will be thrilled. It's still a long way off, but we'll take care of you in your old age, so it's okay to part ways with Andrew whenever. I really think I hit the jackpot with such a good son and daughter-in-law. So, I prepared to send my belongings separately to the apartment Lily found for me. With this, the preparations for my retaliation were complete. I couldn't help but smile at the thought of the surprised faces of my husband and Logan's family. On the day we moved to Hawaii, we arrived at the airport and headed straight to the old house we had purchased. My husband and Logan's family were excited. Little did we know what kind of home awaited us. Starting a new life in Hawaii. So pumped. Dad, you gotta support me with your savings until I find a job, alright. And hey, the inheritance is coming to me eventually, so it's all good, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. 
Take your time finding a job. If you need anything, just ask your mom. We can chill for a while, man. With a revenge on my mind, I didn't even care about that conversation. After a few dozen minutes, we arrived home. It looked way more run down than the photos, almost like it would fall apart in the next storm. The yard was overgrown with weeds. The roof had patches missing, and it looked like it would leak if not repaired soon. What? What's this? This isn't what we saw in the pictures. Were we deceived? We're supposed to live here. I really don't want to. Seriously, what's going on? While my husband, Amy, and the others were clearly feeling down, I was the only one who knew why. When my husband showed me this property for the first time, I felt something was off because the size of the land and the low price didn't add up. So I called the real estate agent. So, what I heard was that the photos were actually from a few years ago and hadn't been updated, and that's why this house is so cheap it's not in livable condition, so it's hard to find a buyer locally. I deliberately kept this information to myself. I figured there was no way my husband would listen to me even if I advised him that the property he found was bad. Looking back now, that decision was the right one. It was hilarious to see my husband, who believed he was always right and never doubted himself, so surprised and dumbfounded that his jaw practically dropped. As soon as we entered the house, the moving boxes we had requested arrived. This house is kinda different from what I was expecting. Yay, well. Let's just think of it as an opportunity to renovate and make it comfortable for ourselves. If we look at it that way, it might be fun, you know. My husband seemed like he was trying to convince himself. Yeah, I guess so. I'm exhausted today, so let's unpack tomorrow. Mom, can you make lunch? Amy, who had been complaining, perked up at Logan's mention of lunch and seemed to regain her spirits. I want Hawaiian food, like loco moco. That sounds great. And don't forget to grab some kohana rum. With that, my husband and Logan's family were relaxing leisurely. The grandchildren were busy exploring the new house, running around excitedly. I pretended to go shopping and hailed a taxi nearby, heading back to the airport. Since there was some time until the scheduled flight I had booked, I enjoyed shopping at the airport and bought a bunch of souvenirs for Matthew's family. By the time I arrived at the new apartment, it was already quite late at night. After hours of having my phone turned off, I finally checked it. To my surprise, I had dozens of missed calls from my husband. Come to think of it, I'm the one who has the bank cards, credit cards, cash, and all that stuff with me, so they must be struggling without any money right now. Also, I haven't arranged contracts for essential utilities like electricity, gas, and water. My husband and Logan's family probably didn't even think about it, assuming I had taken care of it beforehand. As I debated whether to call back or not with a sigh, my husband's call came in at just the right moment. Hey, you finally picked up the phone. Where are you right now? How many times do you think I've called you? Everyone's furious and waiting. I could hear the urgency in his voice, but I responded calmly. Oh, I thought everyone was having fun without me. I'll give you guys that house. I'm not coming back anymore. So from now on, you all have to manage without me. What are you talking about? What about our meals? 
We haven't eaten anything since noon. You're more worried about your food than my concerns at a time like this. Of course. With my husband's words, my decision was made. I'll definitely divorce him. But for now, I'll endure because there are still things I need to do. And we can't even use electricity or water. What's going on? You just noticed now. Don't mess around. Come back right now. Hearing my husband's furious voice, I couldn't stop laughing. No, I'm never coming back again. What? Do you think something like this can be forgiven? I'm not expecting any forgiveness. My husband, always boasting despite being useless, Amy, selfish and all talk, Logan, the lazy one, and the unruly kids. How are we going to live in that rundown house with just those people? I refuse to be manipulated by you and Logan's family's selfishness anymore. I'm going to live my own life from now on. Good luck taking care of your beloved son and grandkids. With that, I hung up the phone and powered it off. I must have been really tired that day because I slept soundly. The next day, I woke up to the refreshing morning sun. Looking around at the spacious bed, the furniture I chose, and the clean, newly built room, my heart swelled with excitement as I realized my new life had begun. As I was about to prepare breakfast and make some tea I had ordered for this day, the doorbell rang. Opening the door, Lily and Emma were standing there. Emily, sorry to bother you so early. We were wondering how your new life is going. Grandma, I brought some bread. Let's eat together. Oh my, I'm so glad you dropped by. This room is so comfortable. Thank you for finding such a nice place for me. Come on in, I just made some tea. While drinking tea with Lily, I briefed her on what happened yesterday. It went well, didn't it? It's great that Emily is free from those arrogant people. Thanks for your help. I feel relieved. Emily, you're not done yet. You need to teach Andrew and the others a lesson so they never dare to speak to you like that again. Keep your schedule open for this Saturday. I'll bring them over. Lily said with a smirk. Ignoring calls from my husband and Logan's family for a few days. Saturday, the promised day, arrived. As Lily instructed, I waited at home, and soon enough, my husband and Amy arrived, led by Lily. My husband and Amy walked into the house without hesitation, and sat on the new sofa without asking. Just when we got a call from Lily, what's with this house? You were all alone here. That's not fair. Because Emily isn't here, we're living a terrible life. We don't eat proper meals, and the house is dirty. Look, we're completely out of money. And how is it possible that there's no electricity or water running? Why didn't you handle the contracts? As the two of them continued to make a fuss, Lily interjected sharply. That's enough. Seriously, why don't you try handling things like cooking meals and setting up utilities yourself? Emily isn't your housekeeper. Who asked you to butt in all of a sudden? Yeah. Did you put her up to this? Taking a step back and looking at the situation objectively, both my husband and Amy were really selfish people. And now Lily was on my side. There's no better time than now to bring up divorce. I felt a sense of liberation. Please divorce me. I said, and my husband, who had been making all the noise until now, suddenly stopped in his tracks, eyes wide in surprise. What are you saying? Who do you think has been supporting you all this time? Emily, what's gotten into you all of a sudden? It's not sudden at all. 
I've been considering divorce from you for a long time. I don't want to breathe the same air as you for even a moment anymore. What are you talking about? I handed the divorce papers with my name and seal on them to my husband. There's no way this is a joke. You're done in my life. You, don't joke around like that. He shouted and tore up the divorce papers. But that was expected. I handed him another set of divorce papers that I had prepared in advance. Tearing those up is pointless. I have several others prepared just like these. What's going on? How do you plan to live without me? Can you even afford the rent and living expenses for this place? If you apologize now, I might forgive you. He thinks that if he yells, I will be under his thumb. Lily chuckled and said, Andrew, don't you know that Emily has enough savings to stand on her own? No way. Emily, you've only been working part-time, so you can't possibly have any savings, right? I have a pharmacist qualification. I used to earn more than double the regular hourly wage, even if it was part-time. After decades of saving, I've accumulated more than enough to live on my own, way more than enough. Yes, I've been working steadily as a pharmacist. My husband has no idea about the money I've diligently saved. Pharmacists are in high demand, so finding another job would be a piece of cake. Really? You earn that much? I'll live comfortably in this house. Why don't you all hurry back to Hawaii? After all, you left Logan and the kids behind, didn't you? I don't want to go back. I want to live here. I thought I could live because Emily does all the housework and has money. But Andrew is useless for anything. What did you say? Don't mess around. Amy, you're saying a little too much. Well, she's right though. Lily and I burst into laughter. Amy is clinging to me and crying. Finally, it seemed like my husband understood his position. He bowed his head, biting his lip, and said, We can make it without you. Please come back. And that's why I've said it so many times. No way. Please, come back. It's pointless to talk. I'll send the divorce papers to your house in Hawaii later. Well then, I'll enjoy a nice cup of tea with Lily, so you guys better head back soon. Though my husband and Amy seemed to protest something, when I mentioned calling the police, they reluctantly left. Wow, Emily, you were so cool. And the way Anru panicked, it's hilarious. I feel so relieved to finally say what I've been thinking for years. Thank you for having my back, Lily. Oh, don't mention it. I just wanted to help after hearing about you from Matthew. Then, Lily shared with me what she heard from Matthew. It seemed Matthew had always felt inferior to his brother Logan and struggled with feeling weak. Actually, my husband seemed indifferent towards Matthew and sometimes treated him harshly, and Logan also looked down on Matthew. Despite that, as a mother, I was always on Matthew's side, and thanks to always treating him kindly, we managed to avoid any major conflicts, he said. Also, he knew that I had been quietly using the money I earned to cover Matthew's education expenses without telling my husband. He had apparently been saying since they got married that he wanted to repay his mother some day. And Lily herself, seeing how hardworking and devoted I was to the family, had wanted to help me for a long time. She saw this as the perfect opportunity to do so and decided to lend a hand. Oh, I see. I should thank both of them. No, 
It's because of Emily's actions that we wanted to help. We actually wished you would live with us. It seems Lily had seriously considered having me live with them. I appreciate you saying that. If you ever feel like living together in the future, just let me know. Also, if you're seriously considering divorce, I have a college friend who is a lawyer. Shall I introduce you? I think he'll give you a good deal. That's great. I'm saved. Don't need that kind of husband anymore. Yeah, right. Let's just cut ties cleanly. Afterward, I divorced my husband through the lawyer Lily introduced me to. Although my husband kept insisting he didn't want to part ways, he finally gave in after the lawyer firmly told him off. I initially thought I didn't need any asset division if we could part ways quickly, but Lily scolded me, saying, you should take as much as you can. Following her advice, I ended up getting more money than expected. With this, I can live luxuriously from now on, and even leave an inheritance for Matthew's family. In the end, my ex-husband and Logan's family sold the house in Hawaii. Well, that's no surprise, there's probably no money left for renovations. Logan's family returned to their old cheap apartment, and it seems my ex-husband moved in there. Logan seemed to have relied on my ex-husband's savings, but with the division of assets, his savings must have dwindled quickly with six people. Amy, who had been saying she didn't want to work, finally seems to have started a part-time job after all. My ex-husband and Logan's family, who are in financial trouble, are constantly fighting, and Matthew said they've been coming to Matthew's family begging for money. Of course, it seems Matthew's family turned them away at the door. After that, my ex-husband and Logan's family also came to my place. You're the only one I need. Please, let's start over. Mom, we were wrong. Emily, I'm so sorry. We can't afford the rent this month. Can you lend us some money, just a little bit? They come begging in such a pitiful state so I sometimes oblige when I'm in a good mood. I couldn't work freely before because my ex-husband forbid it, but now I can work about five days a week as I like. With the money I earn, I can afford slightly higher quality ingredients for our meals every day. Also, since Matthew's family lives nearby now, Lily and Emma often come to visit Matthew's family came to my house on weekends, and it became routine for the four of us to eat together. They all seem to enjoy the food I cook, so it's really fulfilling. Being praised for my cooking skills makes me happy, so I've recently decided to improve further by attending cooking classes. I've made friends for the first time in decades at the class and we enjoy going out for lunch together and having a chat on weekends. When I'm baking cookies with Emma or leisurely enjoying my hobby of reading, I can feel a peaceful happiness that I've never felt before. Instead of my husband and Logan's family, I've gained a deep connection with Matthew's family and a new life. Taking bold action has truly been a good decision.